Hi, this is me, Stupid Past Alex. With two rolls of Ilford 400 and a Canon EOS 500N, paired with an ultrasonic 17 to 40mm lens. I don't realise it right now, but things aren't going to develop the way I'd like them to. That's because they developed like this. Fuck. For the first time ever, I'm not to blame for this. The lab that I dropped my film off to, they just messed up the process accidentally. Or maybe, just like my arch nemesis, they just wanted me to have a bad time. So we have my improperly developed film, which is now purple and blank. Um, I'm not entirely sure how this happened, I think they might have put it through the colouring process. Um, this film that I shot with was Ilford 400, so it's black and white. So the process of developing black and white film is different to colour film. So I do think they might have just run it through the colour process, and that's how you end up with nothing. Two hours driving, four hours hiking, and 72 photos later, and I have nothing to show for it. Well, not exactly, because I did still have my Fujifilm X-T3 with me, which I would normally use just for video recording when I'm out recording something for YouTube. But for some reason that day, I had this gut feeling inside me that I should take a few photos with the X-T3, so that's what I did, and in my experience, my gut is a lot smarter than my head, so I do tend to listen to that. So then onto the camera settings when I was taking photos with the X-T3. I took all the photos in RAW, the colour picture profiles that I used were the standard and the Eterna Cinema. Uh, the Eterna Cinema is probably my favourite because it gives that cinema look to it. I use it most often. The shutter speed, well, that kind of varied depending on what I was taking photos of. Same with the aperture. If I was up close to something and I wanted really nice bokeh behind it, I'd shoot at like f2. Um, if I was out trying to take the landscapey pictures, I would shoot closer to f16. Well, F16 is as high as the lens went, so that is what I shot at. The lens that I used was the Fujinon XF 35mm f2. Um, I actually just got this lens probably last week, and it's my most favourite lens I've ever used on any camera, ever. It's just brilliant, and it wasn't even that expensive. I mean, Fujifilm lenses are pretty damn expensive, but um, I love it. So we were back in Glendalock at the back of Glendalock with the aim of heading straight up the waterfall. Storm Clare had just passed through Ireland, leaving the whole area snow covered, icy, and flooded. And if I wanted to reach the top, I was going to have to overcome all three. Okay, it wasn't that bad. Most of the areas could be overcome with just a short hop. But you know, you put a camera bag on your back and a tripod in your hand and it becomes a little bit more difficult. It was then after a hop skip and a jump that I noticed these pretty chill goats having their lunch in the bushes. They would have once belonged to a farmer, but now they've been let out free and a few generations have passed, so they've now become more feral goats once again, just, you know, roaming the mountains and living by themselves. The area I'm in now used to be used for mining. When they packed up and left, they left behind these really cool gears, those stupid dwarves. And they call it a mine. A mine! It was then time for me to hobble on up the waterfall. One of my favourite features about this area is all of the smaller waterfalls to the left and right of the main waterfall. It's like every 15 steps or so you're, you're stopping to just take it in and take some photos of it. There's something I quite like about these two rocks that are separated by the waterfall that when you're standing at the right angle, you can see that they align perfectly. It's pretty cool. And of course, you know, with me being as vain as I am, I stopped halfway up for some additional selfies. A lot of the footage I got this day was of me using the film camera, loading it up with film and for some reason checking if it had a heartbeat which makes it all quite unusable footage now, unless I talk about it like I just did, which kind of gives me an excuse to put it in, and I think that's okay, right? We're now pretty close to the peak of the waterfall. It's really cold, there's a lot of slippy, translucent ice underfoot, but it's a perfect place to just stop, 
take in the view and click that shutter button on your camera. It was a real shame that the film didn't develop because I had brought that ultrasonic wide angle lens with me specifically to get a photo of the lake from that high point. Suppose you live and learn though, or if you're like me, you probably just live, if that's even true. It was then time for me to head down the waterfall because I had hired some ducks to be models for me and they were looking to give me the bill. This is probably my favourite photo. The duck has just so much character in his face. That little bit of white in his eye really adds to it and he does genuinely look like he has a cheeky little smile. This is, a, yeah, definitely one of my favourites. And after a hard afternoon modelling, they were all tuckered out and ready for a snooze. And not just them, me too, so I headed back to the car where I made my way home. So what did I learn? Well, I always have a backup plan. I was so grateful that I had this instinct to take a few photos with the X-T3 because I would have been able to make a video otherwise. So having a film camera and a digital camera with me was, was really great because it softened the blow when one of them turned out disastrously. And like the same thing could have happened with the digital camera. The SD cards could have got corrupted or knowing me, I could have just deleted all the footage, which is probably it's, it's going to happen one of these days. Once again, I was in Glendalough, Wicklow, Ireland. And once again, I'll say, go there. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any photography disaster stories that you'd like to tell me, uh, please leave them in the comments down below because I would love to not feel so alone. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and before we go, here are just two bonus pictures of my housemate's dog, Maya, yawning. <laughs>